Hi friends, it's great to see you. Um, I wanted to make this quick video to talk about how to tune your guitar so that uh, when we have lessons each week, if you have time, you can tune your guitar beforehand and that way we can jump right into playing music together, talking about music. Uh, you know, I always love to hear what you've been practicing uh, and this will make it a little quicker at the beginning. And it's actually gonna be a lot easier for you to tune the guitar ahead of time on your own or with one of your parents uh, than it is for me to help you tune it uh, online. Uh, it's just the microphones don't pick up the sound as well. So if you can do that ahead of time, awesome. If not, no worries. Um, let's jump right in. There's a couple of things we want to have with us. One, obviously the guitar. Got that right here. Uh, and then we're going to want some kind of a tuner. Now, uh, many of you have a little clip-on tuner. Uh, it might be shaped like this, might be a different color, might be square. Uh, they all function kind of the same way, so we'll look at how those work. Um, and then if you don't have a tuner like this, or even if you do, there's a really great app that's free to download on your parent's smartphone uh, or your smartphone. Um, it's called Pano Tuner, P-A-N-O Tuner, T-U-N-E-R. Um, so if you want to go ahead and search for that and download it, I'd say pause the video now and find that, um, and we'll look at how that works too. Well, uh, let's jump right in. So. The first thing we want to know is what notes do we want to tune these strings to, okay? So we have six notes in our open guitar strings, and those are E, B, G, D, A, and E. Now, not all of you are playing on all six strings yet, which is absolutely fine. We're going to start by tuning the highest string first, and that's going to be this first E note. Alright, so real briefly, some of you might have guitar headstocks which is the part of the guitar up here that holds the tuning keys. It might be shaped like this if you have an electric guitar. And you see I've labeled here, if this is the case, your high E string is here, and then it comes down to B, G, D, A, and E. Okay, so that should be helpful if you have a guitar shaped like that. We are now thinking about these strings with the corresponding letter names, and we think about our musical alphabet, which goes in the same order as the regular alphabet, except it's only the first eight letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Now, I've written this out here to show that when we move in the this direction in the alphabet, so the way that we would normally say it, C, D, E, F, G, and then of course it comes back to A, B, C, we, these notes are getting higher, okay? And we could hear that, that here's an E note, and then if we keep going in this direction, here's an F note. So that's higher because it goes in that way. Now, if we go in the other direction, we say the, like the alphabet going backwards, those notes are getting lower. So here's that F again, and then going back down to the E, right? So we go higher if we go along the alphabet, and if we go backwards in the alphabet, we go lower. This is gonna be really helpful, particularly when we're using uh, our tuner. And so I'm gonna hold up first the, the piano tuner. I'm gonna make sure that you can kind of see this. I'm going to go ahead and hit my high E string, and we'll see how, to, how in tune it is. All right, so we see that it's actually in between the E and the F, right? Now there's two E's there, one's an E flat, you can't really see it, but if that's between the E and the F, that means it's a little too high. So I'm going to tune my tuning key in a direction, just any either direction, a little bit. Now, we hear that pitch go up, and I'm actually getting closer to the F, so that tells me I want to go in the other direction back down to the E. So I'm just tuning the tuning key a little slowly. We get real close to that E, and we see that bar at the top turns green. And we just keep doing that to double check. Even though it lined up once, we let it pause, and we do it again. So some of you might be wondering why there's a cat in this part of the guitar tuning video. This cat, Jane, is meant to illustrate a point. So earlier when we looked at the pano tuner, we saw that there, were, there was an extra E note. 
And we couldn't really see uh, too clearly on the screen, but what that was is called an E flat. So there's actually two E's in the musical alphabet. One's a regular E or an E natural, and then there's an E flat, which we're told is an E flat by this little lowercase b sign. So in our musical alphabet that still gets higher if we go in this direction, in between a lot of these notes, we have flatted notes. So I just took a little chunk of our musical alphabet and drew it up here. So we have E flat, E, F, G flat, G. So why the cat, Alex? Well, when we're tuning our guitar, we don't want to have any flats or sharps. So even though those exist in the musical alphabet, when we're using our tuner and tuning our guitar, they, are, they aren't necessary. In the same way that a cat is not necessary in a video to help you tune your guitar. All right, so now we're going to see how to use a clip-on tuner, which I know many of you have, and many of you have probably tried using uh, at home already. We're going to use it to tune our B string. So you just take the, the tuner and you squeeze these guys and you clip it on to the top of the guitar there so it holds itself on. You hit this button to turn it on. You'll see mine's already on. You can see the lights going on and off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit our B string. You'll see I put my finger on the second tuning peg because that's connected to my second B string. All right, I have a B note showing up. That means I'm really close to the note that I want, but I only have little red lines on one side of that note. So I'm going to turn this in one direction, and I'm going to try to get that to come straight up and down. And you'll see, okay, it's going straight, but if I keep turning, it goes a little past that straight up and down. And if you can see there real small, there's actually different colors on the screen. I have yellow, red, and green. What I want is that line to just line up with the green. And you'll see I'm turning my finger very slowly at the bottom. And when it gets there, I just stop and then I check it up oh, a little too far, go right back just the tiniest bit. There we go. Let's try our third string. This is our G string, third tuning peg. Okay, so that is going back and forth between what's called an F sharp and a G. So, in the same way that we don't want to have any flats in our tuning, uh, we don't want to have any sharps either. You see, it's a little tiny hashtag that probably shows up on many of your tuners. So if we see here, this hashtag means a sharp, it means the note is higher than you want. So even if the letter name is the same, we don't actually want that. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if we tune this really high, we have a G sharp, you say, oh, a G, I want that on my third string. But if it has that sharp symbol, it means it's too high. So we want to lower it, go all the way down into the red, and keep going until it's just the G. See right there, that sharp sign disappears because it's actually a different note. We go down, down until we get to that vertical green. There, now we have our G string tuned perfectly to a G. Um, let's try our D string. You'll notice now I'm putting my hand to reach the tuning key differently. I have a D sharp. So what do I do? I want to go down until the sharp is not there. I keep going down. There, now I have just the plain D or the D natural, and I want to get that line to line up with the green. Excellent. Let's do our A string. Ooh, A was already in tune. How, how often does that happen? And then there's our E. Wow, twice in a row. Look at that. 